I want to continue my discussion of the balance of payments. Now in a previous video I focused on the current account and in this video I'm going to focus on the capital account, the financial account, and the relationship between all three of these accounts. Now the balance of payments, just to recap, is a statement of all transactions made between entities in one country and the rest of the world over a defined period of time. We have the current account, which we previously discussed, which is the summary of the flow of funds due to the purchases of goods or services, or the provision of income or financial assets. So a lot of that is due to trade, exports and imports. The capital account is a summary of flow of funds resulting from the sale of assets between one specified country and all other countries over a specified period and I'll go into a little more detail in a, in a minute. And the financial account refers to special types of investments including direct foreign investment and portfolio investment. So the capital account, originally it included the financial account. So if you're reading a book that's a little bit older or you're viewing some video tutorial somewhere, sometimes they only refer to the current and the capital account because the financial account is included in the capital account. Um, in the current version of the capital account, it includes the value of financial assets transferred across country borders by people who move to a different country. So um, things like the value of goods and financial assets transferred by migrants leaving or entering a country. Um, it includes things like patents and trademarks, and just to note, it's relatively minor in dollar terms to the financial account, and we'll see that in a minute when we look at um, an actual table of the data. Um, here are some examples. Um, a firm in Denmark purchases the patent rights from a U.S. firm. That's going to be a U.S. cash inflow, and that's going to be a credit on the U.S. balance of payments account. Um, if a firm in Germany sells patent rights to a firm in the U.S. that would be a U.S. cash outflow and would be a debit on the U.S. balance of payments account. Um, if a firm in the U.S. purchases the copyright to a movie from a company in India that would be a U.S. cash outflow and would be recorded as a debit. And finally if a British firm purchases the rights to natural gas in the U.S. that would be a U.S. cash inflow and would be recorded as a credit. The financial account consists of things like direct foreign investment. That would be investments in fixed assets in foreign countries. And I believe that uh, if a company, for example, purchases um, uh, part of a com company in another country, they have to have 10% ownership for it to be considered direct foreign investment. While it's not controlling interest, it's certainly enough to have some influence. Portfolio investment are transactions involving long-term financial assets, such as stocks and bonds, between countries that do not affect the transfer of control. Other capital investment um, transactions involving short-term financial assets, such as money market securities between countries, are also included. And then there's a section for errors and omissions and reserves. Uh, measurement errors can occur when attempting to measure the value of funds transferred, and so there's this uh, adjustment for these discrepancies. So here's some examples. Foreign direct investment. Coca-Cola, a U.S. firm, purchases a bottler in Sweden. That would be a U.S. cash outflow and recorded as a debit on the balance of U.S. balance of payments account. Heineken, a Dutch firm, purchases a production facility in the U.S. That would be a U.S. cash inflow and reported as a credit. In terms of portfolio investment, an individual in Singapore purchases shares of IBM, a U.S. firm. That would be a U.S. cash inflow and recorded as a credit. And uh, finally, a U.S. investor purchases shares in a company in Belgium. That would be a U.S. cash outflow and recorded as a debit. And here's a table from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. 
and uh, from the Department of Commerce. It's a little bit hard to read because there's a lot of data on here, but up here they report current account information. Here they have capital account, um, financial account information, and the balances, and I'll break these up uh, into little smaller sections so it's a little easier to read. Um, the capital and financial accounts. Um, here you can see this top part is just the capital accounts, capital transfers, receipts, and other credits, capital transfer uh, payments, and other debits. And although there's no legend here, this is 2016 and this is 2017. And you can see this, these are really small numbers. In fact, in, in 2016, the transfer receipts and other credits is zero on the U.S. balance of payments capital account. Um, they're very small numbers relative to the um, financial accounts down here. Here we have in the top part uh, net U.S. acquisitions of financial assets excluding financial derivatives. Okay, quite a bit larger number here. Okay, this would be uh, over a trillion dollars. And down here it's um, net U.S. incurrence of liabilities excluding financial derivatives and again over 1.5 trillion dollars so again big numbers and they break them up into direct investment assets that would be foreign direct investment portfolio investment assets okay other investment assets and then reserve assets and they do that as well for the liabilities so you can see you know these are much bigger numbers than the capital account numbers. All right, what's the relationship among the current, the capital, and the financial accounts? Hey, okay. this is called the balance of payments, so it should balance like a balance sheet. Now, um, these are two equivalent equations. This is the way they report it in the table that I have: the current account minus the capital account equals the financial account. Likewise, you could put the capital account and the financial account together and say it should equal the current account. And again, it should balance, but because of these statistical discrepancies, because um, estimating the numbers, and they're done by surveys and other uh, methods, you know, it won't balance. So let's flip to um, the bottom of the table, and here you can see that they've put all this stuff together. In line um, 36, they have the balance on the capital account. In line 37, they have net lending or net borrowing from current and capital account transactions. So they're going to take 36 and subtract it from 30. 30 is the balance on the current account, which I discussed um, in a previous video. So they're taking this number here, this 466246, subtracting out the balance on the capital account, 24847, and they get 441,399. In terms of the um, financial account transactions, it's going to be uh, the difference between those two numbers that we had before, the assets and the liabilities, and they're also going to put in um, the derivatives as well. So that's the line plus line 28, which is not here. And you'll notice we get different numbers, 441, 399, 349, 191. Um, technically, these should balance. They should be the same. But again, because of those discrepancies, they don't balance. Now, it seems like a very big number, and it is, but not relative to the size of the U.S. economy. So um, I hope this helps a little bit in terms of your understanding of the balance of payments.